I've been continuing experimenting with the amp voltage amplification using water and aluminum foil. Um, right here is a simple diagram. It's so very simple. This right here, the negative of the battery goes to the uh, aluminum foil that is wrapped around the inside of the cup. Completely wrapped around the inside. And there's a quarter inch piece of aluminum foil right there. That goes that is dunked inside the water, and this cup is filled with water. So from there it goes to the capacitor. This thin piece of aluminum foil goes to the negative of the capacitor, and the positive of the capacitor goes to the positive battery. So what happens is that that capacitor will get a higher voltage than what's inside that battery. And why is that so important? Well, water just like air has resistance to it. So, if anything, that capacitor should have at least as much as in the battery, if not less voltage that's in the battery. So that's what makes this whole setup so amazing. The simple fact that even though water is resistive, it gets a higher voltage from it. And the setup is so simple that it performs the work of a much more complicated system of transformers and circuits and resonant uh, frequencies. It's a really amazing by its simplicity of it. Um, foil wrapped around the inside of the quarter inch uh, piece of foil in the middle touching the water. Just t touching the water. Like I said, the water is supposed to have, have a resistance to it, but it doesn't exhibit that with this setup of both similar uh, metals. And the capacitor will have a higher voltage than what's in the side of the battery. I'm going to further demonstrate it to you guys. I have a setup just like this, and amazingly, it works with any battery. So, right now, I'll be using a AA rechargeable NICAD battery. But, like I was saying, the inside completely wrapped around with aluminum foil. I use blue masking tape to hold the foil in, and I've used it to keep it from shorting out with other leads with this quarter inch right there. And you see how it's touching the water, but it's not touching the uh, other piece of aluminum. If it does that, it's just going to short out pretty much. It's just a quarter inch piece of aluminum. I'm going to show you guys the voltage inside of this AA battery itself is 1.290. Once again, it's, that's the voltage inside of it, 1.290. Now, the voltage that's being amplified due to this system of amplification with water and aluminum is now at 1.506 so quite simply it just amplified the voltage but to keep people from thinking this is, is a, a water barrier effect just simply alone the water should be acting like a resistor but it's not <laughs> so I'm going to change that piece of aluminum out with that piece of copper. So theoretically, uh, a water battery with use two dissimilar metals will produce a voltage. So technically, this will become a battery. So technically, this in series with that should increase the voltage. Well, only one way to find out would we'll take that piece out, and there's a piece of aluminum foil that you want to make. And we'll take this copper. Stick it in there. We're going to put our meter on to that. All right. Now watch the voltage as I put this piece of copper inside. Oh, as you can see, it's draining the capacitor, and it's going to drain it to below the voltage that was in the battery itself. I don't want to do that here. It was at 12.90, 12.8. There we go. Way below the voltage. So technically it's doing the opposite. It's draining the battery while the aluminum foil was actually increasing. Here's the voltage inside the battery. So the copper acts like it should. When put in the water, the water acts like a uh, resistor, which causes resistance, of course. And you can see that there's less power being put inside that capacitor. 
Now what's unique is that this piece of aluminum foil acts like a negative resistor. It's putting power into the system instead of taking it away. Alright, we're way above the um, what's in the battery. Again, what here's what's inside the battery. 1.290 and inside the um, All right, and that's what's inside the capacitor due to the water and aluminum amplification. And like I said, it's just a very simple setup. I encourage you guys to experiment with this because it couldn't be any more simpler, really. There's a circuit diagram again, and just just play with it and have some fun with it. Um. Try capacitors, charging capacitors first, and work your way up to super capacitors. But quite simply, it, it, this amplifies the voltage that goes into that. So this will have a higher voltage than what's inside the battery. So it has everything working against it, but yet it's amplifying. So I'm guessing there's a negative resistor in there. And also for people to note, that if you start working with higher voltage batteries, say like 12 volt batteries, um, if you, you might experience small bubbles forming on the outer rim of this aluminum foil. I'm concluding that might be hydrogen bubbles. I'm not 100% sure, but it could be. I haven't set the bubbles on fire yet, so so it, it does resemble somewhat. I'll keep it from shorting out there. All right, it does re resemble somewhat of a um, I don't know what they call them electrolyzer or hydrogen. Basically, where you have hydrogen, you have to uh, plate and use like uh, um, electrolysis to make hydrogen oxygen bubbles from the water. So that could also be the reason why again the excess amount of voltage it could be the release of oxygen electrons being pushed into that capacitor. I don't know. But I do encourage everybody to play with this a little bit. Because not only do you get higher voltage out, but you're also getting uh, hydrogen bubbles probably. So just uh, experiment with it.